the UN's refugee agency is calling for a more comprehensive European-wide search and rescue operation for migrants. At the moment, the vast majority of the work is borne by Italy's Coast Guard. Now, to bring in the more than 5,000 migrants you were hearing about there that arrived between last Saturday and Monday required 18 landing operations to these Italian ports, as you can see there. And those are the people, of course, who survived the journey. The UNHCR says that 900 migrants have died or gone missing at sea so far this year. Now, last year as a whole, 3,500 migrants died. That's up from 600 in 2013. Now, many of those attempting the journey are escaping the conflict in Syria and oppression in Eritrea. Now, of the thousand or so unaccompanied children who've arrived in Italy since the start of this year, 62%, almost two out of three of those, are from Somalia, Gambia and Eritrea. And 59% of the almost 500 accompanied children were from Syria. Let's get more on this now. Joining me now from Geneva is William Spindler. He's from the UN's refugee agency, UNHCR. Good evening and thanks for joining us on Sky News tonight. Now, of course, this follows the end of a more comprehensive search and rescue operation in 2014, what was known as Mare Nostrum. How much of a difference would an operation like that make in a, a terms of a disaster like this? Well, uh, Mare Nostrum saved uh, over 100,000 lives last year. And uh, what we're seeing now is that a combination of a diminished capacity to save people in the Mediterranean and an and, and increase in the number of people trying to come to Europe is having the effect that more people are uh, trying to, to come and uh, losing their lives in the, in the process. And uh, that's why we think it's uh, urgent to do something to, to stop this humanitarian crisis in the, uh, in the Mediterranean. And you've got a very specific set of proposals, haven't you, that you're putting to European countries. Just run us through those. Well, obviously, these are very complex issues, and they cannot be addressed by a single country. I mean, we, we have heard uh, the impact of this in a small community in, in, in Italy. Uh, and this is obviously a problem that is beyond the capacity of, uh, uh, of, a, of a single country, but it's not beyond the capacity of the EU as a whole. Uh, we are talking about a combined population of 500 million people in, in the European Union. So surely we can find the ways to address these, these issues. One of the ways is to increase the capacity to save people in the Mediterranean. At the same time, we think that people um, should be helped where they are at the moment. Most refugees are not coming to Europe, but they are staying closer to the countries they come from. And in the case of Syrians, for instance, most of them are staying in the neighboring countries. Uh, Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, and Iraq alone are, are uh, hosting nearly 4 million Syrian refugees. And we think that these countries need help in order to continue to, uh, to uh, host this, uh, this uh, large number of, of refugees, so that these refugees don't need to come in these long, dangerous journeys to, to Europe. And uh, that also um, it, it links uh, to the other uh, proposal that we are making. Uh, we should look into the uh, possibility of legal, safe ways for refugees to come into Europe through resettlement programs, through humanitarian admission programs. That kind of um, uh, uh, initiative has been uh, done in the past during the Bosnia crisis, for instance, when there were hundreds of thousands of, of Bosnian uh, asylum seekers and refugees in, in Europe. Um, they were uh, accepted in, in Europe and eventually they returned to their country uh, once uh, peace was uh, restored. Uh, so we think that something similar can be done now, now for Syrian refugees. Well, of course, we can see the, you know, the desperate human cost of tragedies like this and the fact that something must be done. But a lot of European countries say, you know, we can't afford. We have our own problems in terms of our economies. We can't afford to spend the extra money. We don't want to encourage, and we've heard this from our own government, we don't want to encourage further migrants to come across. How do you convince them otherwise? We understand that immigration is a hugely uh, controversial issue in Europe and that there is an economic crisis and that people are worried about uh, this. But at the same time, we should remember that these are not economic migrants. The, ma the vast majority of them are refugees fleeing conflict and persecution and human rights violations. They have no choice. And we need to make sure that, that they, we, we help them. They are fleeing for their lives, literally. 
uh, we think that it's not beyond the capacity of Europe to offer some uh, places for, 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 uh, for some of these refugees. But of course, the vast majority of, of refugees need to be held where they are at the moment, in countries closer to, to, to those where they come from. And of course, the uh, European Commission actually uh, does focus on some of this. It's drawn up its own uh, policy document, the European Agenda on Migration. Um, I mean, you must be familiar with the contents of this. I mean, it's got things, for example, a plan to fight smuggling, offshore processing centers. What do you make of those kind of proposals at UNHCR? Well, the situation is so critical in the Mediterranean that we need to explore all the possible uh, solutions. And uh, probably what we need to do is a combination of, 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 of several things. We need to address the root cause of the, of the problem, which is war and uh, human rights violations. And we need to activate the capacity of the international community to solve conflicts such as that in Syria and now in, in Libya and, and elsewhere. So that's one thing that we need to do in the countries that are actually producing the refugees. Then, as I said, we need to help the refugees where they are mostly, which is the countries neighboring those that are at war. But also Europe needs to play a role in this. And uh, that's why we are looking into the possibility of ordered legal ways of refugees to, to come to Europe. And we can explore all these different possibilities uh, and it needs to be done in a way that uh, it's fair because as we have seen, some countries are bearing the brunt of this. Um, and we would like the European Union to take a leading role in finding uh, solutions for what is a very complex international problem. And just briefly, if you will, sir, uh, we've seen that the fatality rate is going up, but it does look like this isn't putting people off. This issue is going to get bigger. It looks like that. And unless we do something, uh, we will see more tragedies like the one we, we've just uh, seen in the last few days. More people are going to die. And I think that this is unacceptable. And most people in Europe are distressed when they see these images of, of, of children and women and, and men drowning in the Mediterranean simply because they want to find safety and a better life. Indeed. William Spindler, thank you for joining us. Thank you.